Hey gang, let's have a look today at the little CRKT Lucas Burnley designed squid. Now, this knife was everywhere last year, it really took off for some reason. Uh, this is just a standard stainless steel frame lock um, uh, thumb stud deploying knife by CRKT. It's Chinese made, it uses 8CR13MOV steel. And that's it. It's just, I think it's, you know, it's a very good design, I suppose, like very, um, you know, individual looking. There isn't really much around that looks like a squid, apart from probably the custom that it's designed on, I would assume, uh, unless it's not designed on a custom, unless it's just um, one of Lucas Burnley's original designs for CRKT. But it's, um, it, it took the world by storm last year, it really did. It was on all of the EDC sites. It was, it was everywhere. So, Let's get a handle on what it is. So this is a very small knife. Let's compare it to some other knives that I have on hand. I'll fully open it. So let's pop it up the top. I'll put it in the middle there. So let's look at it next to a Benchmade 940. Mm. There we go. So it is a little knife. Without a doubt. Let's look at it next to Paramilitary 2. It is a very little knife, as you can see. Kind of in the same realm as those little cold steel, tough light kind of knives. Those really little two inch blade style thingies. Uh, let's look at it next to a large Sebenza, just because I've got one on hand. Um, it's a very good time to be a knife reviewer when you've got a Sebenza sitting around. Uh, there we go. And let's look at it next to my light use knife, the one that I pretty much carry every day. The Elmar Falcon. Got it in one. I didn't call it the eagle this time. The falcon. So, what do I think of this one? Well, it's comfortable to hold. It's got good ergonomics for such a small knife. It's definitely a three finger knife. Even for someone with medium to small hands, I would imagine it's a three finger knife. Uh, you know, and it carries fairly well. Like when you squeeze and bear down on it, the couple of hot spots that do present themselves are clip related, so you, um, you know, they've gone and made it as wide as they can without making it silly, but the clip still kind of digs into the side of your hand. Um, you know, it's got a pretty decent uh, liner lock there, it's a little bit shallow in terms of getting your thumb in, it's, um, let's zoom in rather than bring it to the camera. Yeah, it's got some jimping on it, so you can find it, but it does feel very, very, you know, very tight in there to get it across. So really, just pushing that thumb skin in there and wrenching it across. Um, this is a twenty-dollar knife, so that's kind of what's been doing so much business for it. Just that it doesn't cost very much to have one of these. So uh, I ordered this from Outfitter Country, the eBay seller, just to something to review, and I thought, oh, when it gets here, I'll have a bit of a crack with it and see if it cuts and see if it. See what the fuss is, kind of thing. It's got a, um, a good little drop point blade. It's about the best shape you'd want to make a blade of this size, I reckon. Either this shape or a Warncliffe shape on these types of blades are about what you want. Um, nice little flat section, so you can do some, you know, shaving or carving, and then just a nice little bit of belly and a relatively, you know, fine tip. It's obviously, a bit of a stout little, um, stout little grind, the drop point um, hollow ground with a flat here, so you know it'll do okay at piercing as well. 8CR13 MOV steel is not particularly good steel, but when you're paying $20, you're never going to get particularly good steel. Uh, even if you're, you know, this is a, about half the price of even those real steel and rook knives I'm always going about. So very, very cheap little knife. Uh, and it is well put together, so there's nothing wrong with the overall construction of it. Uh, it's just going to come down to whether you know, do you bother with a knife this cheap or do you just save up another half a week and get something that's twice the price but also easily twice as good and that's kind of where I usually fall into. Um, I fall into that. I'm yet to be sold on these little CRKT 8CR13 MOV knives. I just, um, I always just would rather have that extra $10 and have a better steel and, you know, not just a full on heavy frame lock flipper, uh, fr frame lock um, design. Um, like you often get with uh, CRKT. The Amicus was the same, just didn't really speak to me. Just another kind of, um, yeah, there's just so many of them. And it's like between these ones and Kershaw's kind of budget knives, you just kind of get lost amongst all the um, all the ACR 13, either Black G10 or stainless steel um, frame lock or line lock knives. Um, and I know it's just the materials and me being a material snob, that's definitely half of that problem there, but you just find it really hard to engage, unless you find a really amazing design. This is a good design, but it's certainly not something that's so good that I'm actually going to choose to carry this thing. So there you have it. Um, 
But when it does come to carrying it, it's got a pretty deep carry pocket clip. It's got a lanyard hole there in this um, you know, nylon or G10 backspacer there, so you can put a little lanyard to assist you pulling out of its pocket. Um, but yeah, in carry pocket, I'll just show some shots of it in my pocket, obviously. Um, yeah, it does fine. When you get out, um, it cuts about as well as a um, hollow ground 2 inch blade is going to do, which is yeah, pretty good. It's fine. It's just not very long, so even spanning an apple is going to be a bit difficult with this one, but having it as a little utility knife for opening your packages and your mail is probably going to be fine, but it will go dull very quickly as well, if you, especially if you're cutting cardboard. Cardboard dulls 8CR13 uh, very quickly in my, in my experience. And of course, you've seen my rope tests where uh, 8CR13 is one of the lower performers, and I think that was in a... Uh, what brand was that in? I can't remember what brand uh, that HCR was in. Um, I think it might have been a Kershaw. Anyway, don't quote me on that. Our deployment is fine. It's smooth. It's obviously running on like a Teflon washer, I think. Um, maybe a bronze. Not sure. Um, let's take it apart and have a look, shall we? So yeah, just a Teflon washer in there, uh, there's the back spacer, um, yeah, so just a pair of Teflon washers, they seem to be well enough oiled, but um, yeah, very, very simple knife uh, in construction there, shouldn't be too much of a bother getting it back together, um, I will do that off camera because, geez, it'll take a, I could, it could take a few minutes and it's, it's wasted time, but you know, overall, it's a, you know, nothing's going to go wrong with a knife that's built like this, there is a, um, there is very little um, to cause problems in terms of, you know, funniness, uh, weird locks or weird anything really, so it's probably going to be a durable little um, everyday carrier, but uh, in my opinion, the just the soft steel, the general size of it, and you know, just the looks of it don't really speak to me that much, so probably not one that I'll be uh, carrying too much, it's probably definitely in line to, um, you know, next time someone's uh, in need of an urgent gift, uh, more likely to go to someone else. Anyway, um, that's my thoughts on the CRKT squid. Uh, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.